right guys welcome to another episode of burner nates here so once again a different style of video it's our second series second in this series of uh musky fish and tech tips as far as baits and we all love looking at different musky baits buying different musky baits i mean how many dollars have we all spent trying to find the next best lure to catch the fish but the first episode in this series was bucktails so we're going to leave a link in the description if you guys want to check that episode out that is part one of this series we got a little bit more background as far as Rich Reiner. This is who we're with tonight. He is uh, he was very instrumental in the musky industry for a number of years, 17 years, full-time guide. But um, we kind of delve more into that in episode one. So if you guys want more of that info, head over there. Right now, we're going to jump right into topwaters. That's uh, a bait that has caught a lot of good fish for us. Yes, you have. <laughs> Jake has done very well with topwater and... It's been a fun bite. I mean, it seems like Jake's always itching to throw that top water on, which as am I, you know, especially that last hour of the day or something like that. But as far as we're going to tap into some of Rich's expertise and uh, see what he's got to say about different options as far as top waters and maybe how to tune some differently. So what's uh, what's first on the list we want to talk about? Well, you know, for like you said, you know, of, of all the bait classes, top water is probably the most fun. Yep. It's the most exciting because there's nothing like a big fish and I think you can you can relate to this. Oh yeah. I think that you got a fifty one inch or something. Yeah. Fifty inch or fifty one and a half. And it crashed uh was that a top yep, rater? That one yeah. was yeah. Well, she's not she's it, not she's still kicking but it is it's getting pretty rough now. You should have brought it, we could have tuned it. It's here. It's here. Oh well we'll ch let's see what we can do. Yeah. <laughs> let's see if we can fix it. But yeah. you know it's the same thing as bucktails, you know, bait you know, any bait, regardless whether it's a bucktail, whether it's a topwater, whether it's a jerk bait, they're all tools. Yeah. Okay. And the thing of it is even with the with with topwaters, there's certain baits that are what I would call fish finders. And then 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 there's a bait, there's you know, baits that you want to use. If you know that you've got certain fish in that given area then you want to use those. They stay in the strike zone longer. Sure. You know, have you ever been out on a night and you're throwing a tail bait, for instance, in the heat of the summer, and you got fish coming up and they're whacking at it, but they're just not connecting? Yeah. First of all, I think most people need to realize with musky baits, muskies are notorious for following. Yeah. That's not what muskies do just to do. I really believe, at least in my opinion, muskies follow because either the bait's too large or too small, it's got too much sound or not enough sound, um, too fast, too slow. That's why a muskie follows. Interesting. Yeah. And I think what, what creates that is the strike zone. And we, dis we discussed that a little bit. Yeah, in okay. Yeah. Well, it's the same thing with topwaters. I think, you know, when I said that, you know, of the first family of topwaters that are out there is toppers. That's probably the, uh, the one bait that very few people use. Yeah. Well, I just started. I started using them, and it's a different. It's a little bit different presentation. It's pretty. It's still fairly subtle. I mean, depending on how fast you reel it. But I mean, this, this is calm as glass. Right. So you know, the first thing a guy picks up is that top rater, and all of a sudden he's throwing that top rater and he's chugging that thing along. Now, I'm not telling you a muskie wouldn't hit that bait, mm -hmm. but more times than not, how many times you get follow-ups and they don't commit? Mm -hmm. Is because, quite frankly, the quieter the water is. The more sound is, you know, is, is being, uh, you know, it was, it's being pushed down into the water column, and I think too much sometimes. It can, there can be just too much. Interesting. Yeah. So, I, I mean, we we usually do tend to run our top waters a little bit more subtle. I mean, not not loud, not choppy, but. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start with toppers, okay? okay. Yeah. And I've got these kind of laid out that way. Yeah. And how I pick my top water baits. Now I'm going to use my rod, this yep. rod, because number one, I've got a smaller leader. Guys today in musky fishing have a tendency to use equipment I feel that's way too heavy. Um, when what I mean by that is, you know, smaller top water baits. I, I use a really small wire leader. You know, you don't have to have saltwater equipment to land a musky. The purpose of it is to actually. Um, you know, to throw some of the baits that guys throw. So if you take this topper, this water is real calm. Okay. Now this bait's already tuned. Listen to that. Very subtle. Exactly. But I'm going to tell you, through the years, 
I have caught so many fish on, on a small topper with these, you know, with these uh, blades. Okay, so I think probably the best rule of thumb, you know, for somebody is the calmer the, or quieter the water is, the smaller the blades. So right now this is glass calm and I found these to work very well. This is a big bait up on the Chippewa flowage and, and believe me, a lot of guys would laugh right now. I know they're laughing and they go, well, that thing's too small. What do you want to catch with that bass? This bait's accounted for a lot of 35, 30, 32, 35, 40 pound muskies. So it, it, they work very well. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, you know, when a muskie's coming up at a top water bait, it's not coming up to the bait because it's seven inches long. It's coming to the bait because of the sound not the size yep. okay the next bait okay that's fairly popular with most musky fishermen is is a topper with with delta blades now these blades are a little bit bigger so let's say that whether you know you got a chop here or you've got you know if you got a slight chop or it's real calm and it's darker water like this is basically the first thing you want to do with these is they're never tuned and I found by placing your index finger inside and lifting up on the blade, so you're curling the whole blade up, switch it, and do the same thing, but not as much on this side. Now, I just tune the front. Now, this is the one I didn't lift as much, and this is the blade that's in the back. So this blade here, I'm going to lift up. I'm going to lift up a little more like I did on the first size and then come back on this side and do the same thing, just a, just a little bit of a hint. So now that it's, it's counter-rotating. Show the difference between those delta blades and the other style topper too. Okay. These are called two points or ten points or whatever, you know, but they're, they're definitely, so when the water's calm as glass, I like throwing a topper like this. If there's, if it's calm as glass on dark water, and or when you got a slight chop, then we go to the delta blades. Now, you saw me, t I should have ran this bait before I, uh, just to show you the difference. Mm -hmm. One of the things I look for in a bait like this or any bait is the spit, including in a tail bait. Listen to the chirping. Look at the bubbles coming off that bait. That's a properly tuned topper. Now, a lot of people say, well, how did you get that right the first time? I've only done this a, a few hundred times <laughs> for a lot of people as well. So that would be the next topper. Again, if, if you got dark water with calm glass water and or a slight chop or on a clear body of water where you're fishing a, a topper over the weeds and you need something a little bit more noise, that would be the next choice. Years ago, I started playing with different blades. Now, I already tuned this one, okay, and, and actually here, here's one of them right here, okay. This was, this one's not tuned. So, this way we're going to give them a chance to hear this. Well, it's not too bad because it's got four blades. The original name for this bait was called a four banger. So here we go. Now this bait is not tuned. You hear the sound? Not much. Exactly. Yeah, it's not spitting much either. Right. And I've always looked, regardless whether it's a tail bait or a topper, I look for, you know, the spit. So we're going to do this one. I think I started playing with it and you guys pulled up. You know, I got to tell you something tonight while I was waiting for you guys, I was casting off shore, playing with a few baits, and I had a muskie come up and blow up on one of these. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So. So, let's see if we can get this right. I've been tuning like crazy today, and my hands are starting to get tired from doing that. Look at the difference. And again, when you're using a topper, uh -huh. difference, huh? Yeah. 
What do you think? It's a lot different. So, now, that bait, I think, was made by Holcomb Tackle. It was a bait that we were playing with prior to this, uh, when we had musky busters, and we called it a four banger. I'm gonna put that right yep. here. This one here is a four banger. If you look, I think, on the outside there, there's a baby duck, I think, of this bait. Yep. Yeah. And it's the same thing. This bait will do the same thing. You like black and orange, don't you? Sure, yeah. You have, there, you got one. All right. And you got one. Nice. How's Sweet. that? Thanks, so now Rich. you guys can, I think when you put these to work, you know, around where you fish, I think you're going to do really well with those, okay? Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, those are basically the toppers that I use. You know, uh, as you can see with this one, there's a little bit more, you know, added to it, so it's a little bit louder. Yep. One of the things I was going to say is before I, you know, did the toppers is I usually start the season out with a walk the dog bait, and a lot of guys do, and, and, and everybody loves walk the dog. The key thing here is to find a walk the dog that works because a lot of people have a hard time, with the, you know, with this bait. Right. Um, Again, it's a really good late spring, early summer. This bait here is made by Chaos Tackle. A lot of people don't. Chaos Tackle makes, um, you know, Medusas, and everybody knows it for Medusas, but they don't realize, look at this. This is a Bubba. I mean, Chaos Tackle's got a lot of good baits, and they don't want to sound like a, like an advertisement, but it is what it is. Hear that plop? Yeah, it's a nice, that's a nice super tight when it goes. Yes. Sometimes when you're using a bait like this and you got fish in pulse frontal conditions, this is one of the best top water baits you can use. This bait will bring up fish when nothing else will. I'm, I'm pretty partial to a chaos, uh, to a bubba. And again, a lot of people don't even know that chaos tackle makes this bait. Yeah. So, but again, this is a late spring, early summer. It's a great post frontal bait, as is a flap tail. Yep. You know, um, you know, it's funny. Back when I started musky fishing, you know, there used to be a man by the name of David Snotty, and it was a gift to get your hands on a snodlo. Oh yeah. And he was the one that really brought, you know, flap tails around. Then you had, uh, you know, hyphen had a series of uh, flap tails. And today, there's a tremendous amount of flap tails out on the market. Um, see that one? I didn't bring it out. That's the one that, that Jake was really impressed with. This here is made from a guy down in southern Wisconsin. His name is Babe Campbell. Um, you know, very few people know he makes this. He's more known for making a, a minnow bait and a, and a panfish bait, but he makes these flap tails. Um, and like I said, there's a lot of good ones. I mean, of all the flap tails on the market, you know, I'm, I like a, you know, a, a TR. They make a, that's that smaller bait that was in there, um, a TR uh, flap tail. Uh, I like a Lee Lures. Lee Lures makes a flap tail yep. that I like a lot. We've, just, had, we've had success on them. Yeah, it's a really good bait. But this one, check this out. It's got a different clicking sound to it. Yes, it yeah. does. Yeah. So it's, it's uh, I don't even know what he calls this, but. I would say a lot of the flap tails on the market are more of that, that chinking. Yeah, you know, grab that TR one yep. once. As opposed to that one's more of a, a clacking. Well, and that's it. And guys have had a lot of success with this bait already. And so, uh, again, it's stuff like that, finding stuff that's different. Cause I think there's so much with, with uh, you know, musky baits up. I got in the line. That's how I, I store my flap tails. 
see if you notice the same one with this. It, it just, instead of having the splitters open, I close them so that they're, uh, you know, so they're protected. Um, I have a wire leader on this, but, you know, I have a tendency to use a smaller leader, but this is a TR. Hear that? That's a nice sound and bait. Yes. Yeah. Like well, So that's a TR. Like you said, of the three, of uh, uh, the flap tails on a market, that I, I like the I like the smaller TR customs. I love this. This is a great bait. Um, this is one I have a tendency to use, but if I gotta throw a big bait, I'm really TR makes bigger bait. Uh, but I really like that, uh, you know, that bait that Babe Campbell's making. And uh, like I said, Lee Lures makes a phenomenal t flap tail. And I think you guys have done well with them, like you said. So, yep. so I'm gonna take and. The reason I pointed those out now is because those are, you know, specific baits. I'm not, when I'm throwing a bait like this, I'm not looking for, I'm not necessarily looking for fish, but I'm know, I know that I've got fish in the area and they seem to work really well in post frontal conditions. So basically we got toppers when we're looking for fish um, and in post frontal conditions and or late, you know, earlier in the year, I have a tendency to use the flap tails. Now, as the season progresses, okay, I just, I'm going to point this out. You know, a lot of people talk about using topwaters early in the morning and then in the evenings. The fact of it is topwaters will catch fish all day long. You yeah, know, the key... Yeah, proof of that. Yes. The, it, the, it's a, even in like high skies too. You know, oh, yes, they'll sun. come up. Here's the thing. Um, as the season progresses, as the water warms up, that's when we have a tendency to grow tail baits. Now this bait here is called a Little Sister. Um, it's made by Chaos Tackle. Uh, Suic Lures makes a bait called a Nightwalker. You know, those two baits have a tendency to have a slow pop. And I'm gonna point this out because I've heard so many people talk about, you know, all oh, tail baits are all the same. That's not true. Now I don't have, I, listen, just listen to how slow that bait is. I think I did mess with this bait a little bit already. But what I was going to say is, yeah, I already messed with this one. Um, in order to tune these to get the most out of them, is I basically place my finger inside and I take and I, and my thumb in the back and I push and I keep that crease and I push and I go down with the blade. So that's where you get that pop. Again, the two baits, there are two different type. See how it even got deeper? See how it's chugging more? Yep. Lee Lures probably makes the most perfect tail bait because it never needs to be tuned. Never. I think you've found that with yours, Jake. Uh, I mean, it's, it's been a it's, very good producer. They're it's all great baits, yeah. but it's just the way he, they're just built. They're expensive, but they're really quality baits. Yeah, I mean, you caught a ton of fish on that. You know? Yes. And you don't, they don't get knocked out, but when they, they do, the tails get knocked out and that's how you basically tune them to get that sound. And you, and you got to play with them a little bit, mm. but um, you know, as the water temperature is warm, this is a really great choice. Now, another bait that in some cases has gotten lost with musky fishing is globes. And I had a bigger globe out and I don't know what we did with it, but you know, I'll show you how, you know, when we talked about musky baits and how, you know, that they come from other baits on the market. If you look in that bucket back there, there's a yellow, a, a Fluger yellow globe. This is the original globe that was on the market. This is a Fluger globe. It's stamped with the Fluger globe emblem. And this was the bait that the old timers used to use uh, back in the day. Now, it's funny because it brings back memories because that's what I remember seeing, remember seeing in my 
dad's tackle box and my grandpa's tackle box with the globes. Here in Wisconsin, this bait accounted for a lot of big fish. It just didn't get the notoriety that a lot of other bait. You know, back when I first started musky fishing, there was very few musky baits. You had Cisco Kid Toppers, you had Fluger Globes, you had Marathon Musky Hound Bucktails. They were made local, Wausau, Wisconsin. Musky Monks. Now the key to a, a, a globe is to crank them real slow. Now, that doesn't look like much, does it? Super subtle. But you know what? A fish can hear that. Right. And you'd be surprised some of the most ferocious strikes would come off just moving a bait that slow. Just turning the blades. And a lot of guys think they gotta do this. But you notice I've got this tuned where it's spitting. Did you notice that's the key thing with all those baits? They're spitting water. Hear the tick? Yep. Hear that? Even when it's moved real slow, it's, it, it's got that tick. Yep. Okay. Now, there are companies that have re replicated this bait, which is the one I just had in my hand. That's called an American Tackle, um, that's called an American Tackle um, Tornado, he calls it. So that was a replication of a Fluger Globe because you can't buy Fluger Globes anymore. This was my replication. And one of the things I found through the years, I really like brass. And so this is, was called, this is a, a cyclone. I used to hand make these and then Slammer Topwater Company started mass producing these instead of me trying to make these baits because I really, I, I would rather have gone fishing than make baits. But then in, he was pumping them out and, and uh, as he did with a lot of topwater baits. So what's your theory with brass? It's got a different sound, you'll hear. Every time you pick it out of the pack, it just sounds good. Look at it. the blades are a little bit bigger. Look how slow I'm crawling at. Look at the commotion. That's the key thing with globes. I like to move them slow. It's definitely a different sound. Right. Mm -hmm. Only sound that a brass that a brass blade can make. Matter of fact, for a lot of guys that love topwater baits, they remember the name Frenchy LeMay. Yep. Most of Frenchy's baits were made with brass blades. Hmm. Today, uh, Tim Radis from you know here in Wisconsin, he owns T uh, T R Custom Lures. Right. He uses basically brass on the majority of his baits. Sure, okay. So. Um, as you can tell, there's so much, there's so much as far as that's out there that we don't even realize. I mean, we fish, I mean, we have a number of baits, but in the, at the end of the day, there's so much untapped as far as what you could have in your lineup and tackle box or change up from year to year. And I mean, you're showing it right here, you know? Well, yeah, I mean, and, and I use all these baits at one time or another. I mean, this is really the cream of the crop. I mean, there's a lot of other baits I could show and it's not any disrespect to the companies. I just this is what I use. Right. And I, I think it's a, it's a benefit to, you know, that we wanted to bring to you guys to show some of the other things that are out there that get so easily clouded over as far as, you know, I mean, there's so many options to be thrown at these muskies, but we also tend not to try to get caught up in baits. I mean, we like to go back to what we know works, but here's perfect examples of other options to try. Well, the baits that I just talked about before, those are baits that if we're looking for fish, we're, we're, we're searching an area to find fish, yep. those are the, the baits that we would use. So now let's say, okay, we've come along here, we've had two or three blow-ups. And it's like, okay, but they wouldn't connect. We want a bait that's gonna stay in the strike zone longer. And first one I use is a creeper. That was one of my favorite baits growing up. Yeah, it's amazing how many people don't use them today, but they still account for a lot of nice fish. There is a, a I guess a group of guys that use creepers. Now, as I'm using this, this really isn't really, it's kind of walking real nice, but it's not really spitting. 
So, what I do is the wings are the right span, the wings are even, but I'm taking and I'm actually taking the top of the fin and I'm moving it. A little goes a long way, okay? You don't need to do a lot, but I'm moving them down, okay? Now, I didn't do as much as you think there. It looked like I was, you know, really wolfing on it, but I was trying to make sure that they're both even. They're kind of pitched in a downward motion. This creeper here is a TR, a TR Custom Lures. You know, and I mentioned, I've mentioned them a few times, but you know, of all the top water baits in the market, Tim really does a great job. I would say, you know, TR Custom Lures, you know, Tim Raddis, and then hear the difference in the sound. Mm -hmm. And Lee Tauken probably makes some of the nicest, you know, top waters in the market today. Now listen. Hear the difference? Yeah, pops just a little bit more. It's like a... Tuning is important. But it was a very subtle change you made. That's all I did. A little, a little goes a long way. Look at the difference even in the action of the bait. And I could tune this even more if I wanted to. Yeah, there's like a doop, 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 doop. And, and, you know, right. you didn't quite, you heard it, but it was, it's more pronounced well, now. It's actually throwing bubbles now. Yeah. It just See that like spit? Huh? It just looks like it should get eaten right now. It, and they do. <laughs> and and the, again, the creeper is accounted for a lot of fish. You know, uh, un, you know, there's a multitude of creepers on the market. This is, like I said, is made by TR Tackle. Um, it, it's a, uh, it's to me one of the, you know, the, you know, it's a custom creeper. It's well made. Um, as far as a mass-produced creeper, I think there's a company called, it's a Bitten Tackle, and they make a mass-produced creeper, and it's pretty darn good it's, it, for a creeper. So, um, it's, but for my money, it's hard to beat that. Nice. The other bait, and I think most fishermen know about this, is a hog wobbler. I'm sure you guys have got hog wobblers. Uh, again, we do something a little bit different to our hogs. We actually... We used to do this, but we, we finally talked Greg Nimmer into doing this. And Greg Nimmer makes probably a bait that a lot of guys know about. It's called a, it's called a Wally Pog, and it's a hog wobbler type lure. He also makes a bait called an undertow. And this is the undertow. But then we started having Nimmer, you know, we started taking our hogs to Nimmer and having them Nimmerized. What he does is he cuts, you know, the joint out. He puts heavy you know, heavier screws in there, reshapes the back joint, and he, he uh, puts a, a much bigger lip. I didn't bring a regular hog wobbler because I don't have any regular hog wobblers because all my hog wobblers are nimmerized. And the purpose of that is, is one of the nemesis of a hog wobbler is they work way too slow. And once you try to crank them fast, they don't work. With a hog wobbler that's been nimmerized. Listen to the sound and you can move them a lot quicker. They've got a lot more action in place, but you can still work them slow. Look at how spastic that bait is in the water. That's interesting. Now, if you took a regular hog wobbler, it has a totally different sound and action. Yeah. You can hear that bait coming through the water. Right. Yeah. So, we want to be able to speed it up. Basically, what, the reason we want to speed it up is because the bait's got more action, but yet you're reeling it slow, but it's a little bit more spastic. Sure. Yep. Making more sound. Yep. I'm just going to try his undertow to show you the difference. And a lot of guys, see, and the only reason I'm mentioning names of these baits right now is a lot of people don't even know these baits. Mm -hmm. But they're baits that we use, and they're, and they're, they're great tools. And the key, what makes them a great tool, first and foremost, is the sound and vibration that the bait is making coming through the water. So, I don't know if you guys have noticed my rod, but the guides are totally different compared to an average musky rod.
Look at how much water that bait's pushing. And you'll hear the knack. Yeah, that does click a lot more. Wow. Yeah. But people don't even know this bait exists. Yeah, it's an, that is definitely like a knock. Yes. And I find this to be a very productive bait. Sure. So, those are the main baits that I use with topwaters. Yep. I would say when it gets right down to it, the one bait that very few musky fishermen use is the toppers. Those are the unsung heroes. I catch a tremendous amount of fish on toppers. But if you notice, and he picked this up on this, Jake said, every one of those baits were spitting, weren't they? Yeah. I've got every one of those baits tuned, you know, to get the most out of those blades because that sound is amplified down into the water right. and that's what those fish are keying into. Yep. Always remember, the fish have got to be able to feel it through their lateral line. They've got to be able to hear it through their inner ear and then they've got to be able to see the bait. And if you put all three of those things together in the proper conditions with those baits, you're going to be successful in catching more fish. True, yeah. So. And it's, and it's new bait, or not new, but different variations of baits that have been out there for a long time that we or you guys could implement into your arsenal of, of baits. So hopefully it helps. I mean, that's what we were going into this with was we obviously, we try to bring, Jake and I try to bring you as much information as we can as far as, you know, what's working for us, what we're doing on any given weekend to try to catch fish, put fish in the boat. And now we've got an opportunity with Rich here just to shed some more light on different baits that are out there, how to tune them. And uh, like I said, hopefully it, hopefully it helps. So uh, I think we'll jump on to the next one then in the series, but uh, that concludes the top water one. So thanks for going into that rich we you appreciate got. the info and uh more to come so i think uh now we're we'll move on to at some point here we'll dive into the dive and rise or jump into the dive and rise i think and what we'll do is we're gonna do the jerk baits with uh and gliders at the same time yeah yeah that'll be an interesting jake episode. and i were already playing with a bait that he looked at he, he you know we know he's a big crane bait user yeah and he saw he found a bait that crane makes it i think kind of surprised him out. there you go so something to look forward to in the next episode right Definitely. All right. Well, thanks for watching, guys, as always. We appreciate it. We'll see you on the next episode.